and congratulations on another Sweet 16. I just wanted to ask you about it, the composure that your players had in that game the other day. That's something you can't really replicate in practice, but you guys are so good at that. If you could uh, just expound on that, if you could. Well, you can replicate that in practice if you're a coach. You know, if you're not a coach, you probably wouldn't understand it. But you can replicate that uh, in practice, just like you can replicate um, pressure situations with free throws. They, they'd rather make a free throw than have to have the team do this or do that. Sometimes there's a lot of pressure on making a free throw in practice. Um, you know, we do a lot of uh, two minutes, uh, three minutes, or the first time out after the four minute, and here's how we're gonna play, here's what we're gonna run. We put two minutes and 38 seconds on the clock, red team has the ball, um, they're up two, and if they lose, they have to run two shuttles. You know, you better have some poise at practice, so you, you got a lot of people counting on you uh, to execute, uh, do the right thing. So uh, poise is something you can see when nobody else is around. Uh, just like how we prepare. You know, we, we prepare uh, when nobody's looking. Uh, so when everybody is looking, uh, we're ready. Now that doesn't mean the ball's always gonna go in. Um, you know, the other night when um, our last game when Jamal and Marcus got four fouls, um, there wasn't any panic. You know, we kind of knew what we were going to do. And it's not like I had a million choices. <laughs> you know, we weren't going to get the ball to J1 at the top of the key and say, go work your magic, Juan. Uh, he has no magic. Um, you know, Jairus was an option, but um, Jairus is not going to get a clean shot. He was always going to have to make a hard shot. Whereas uh, Tremont is our best ISO player. Um, and we've used him many times this year uh, in those situations, just not, just, not, just not like we did the other night. When you have Jamal and Marcus on the floor, you see it in pieces. When they're not on the floor, you got to see who, see what he's really good at. And fortunately for us, uh, he stepped up to the plate and um, made a lot of big shots. Does that uh, come, and by the way, I, I minored in coaching. That wasn't my major. My major was radio, TV, journalism at K-State. Well, one, so one, one, <laughs> well one, thing I, one thing I know about uh, uh, coaching, uh, Matt, you don't have to minor in it. Everybody can do it. <laughs> exactly. If you, don't, if you don't believe me, ask them. Yeah. <laughs> Does that come back to, you coach him hard, but you also hug on him and congratulate him and all of that. Is that that family atmosphere that you've you cultivated there at, at UH? As far as what? As far as being able to come through, count on those guys when it when they, when it's really tough to keep your composure. Uh, you know, I don't think our guys are look at it like that. I mean, you know. Uh, we were ahead in the game. It's not like we were down 10 at the time. You know, we were down 10 at halftime, and I think by the 16-minute mark, the first time out, we had cut it to two. And then we took the lead. Uh, then Marcus got his fourth foul around the 10, 10, 20 mark. And I think Jamal got his fourth foul, eight something. But um, the question you're asking is relevant in every area not just in that area, you know, that's, that's who we've been for nine years. We didn't just start doing this last month. That's been who, that's who we are. Um, but that's every team I've ever had is like that. That's why it's not hard to do. You know, <clears throat> we start in June and here's, here's the uh, expectations. But so the, the difference in uh, programs and teams is usually accountability. You know, everybody's got a team, but do you have a program? Do you have a culture? And that's, um, you know, standards and expectations and accountability. Um, the, the, un, the word that's probably not used enough in those areas is relationships. You, you've got to have a relationship. I got to be able to trust you, man. And, and they got to be able to trust me. 
That's why telling them the truth, even though that's something they may not want to hear, is what they love. You know, uh, we had uh, a little practice yesterday and, and we had two kids do something that I didn't like. So I put them on the line and ran them. Um, that's just the way we do it here. You know, uh, we have another game, uh, one game we know for sure. Um, we're not changing anything. It's our, what is our, uh, what is, how many games have we played? 30, 36. 36. Uh, 30, we played 36 games. So this is our 37th game. You know, we're not going to do anything different in our 37th game. What's changed is how many people's on this uh, board in front of me. Good Lord. You know, but at our 22nd game, I don't know who we played. There was nobody here but the regulars. So things change around us, and rightfully so. It's the NCAA tournament. It's March Madness, Sweet 16. But um, it's just, it's a moment. It's a moment in time for all of us. Um, and our focus is uh, stay in the moment. I've got my practice plan over here on my board. Uh, I've got my notes um, that I want to get across in a film session. But that board is no different than uh, playing Tulane a month ago or playing Tulsa three months ago. I do that for every game. So this is our next game, and that's how we approach it, and we stay in the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. You bet. We'll go to Chris Gardner, please. Chris, go ahead. Coach, who are players on Miami to watch and what makes them so competitive? Well, they have the ACC player of the year, Chris. Um, he's gifted. I mean, he's really gifted. Um, uh, Wong, he's, he's, uh, he's a load. Um, you know, talking to coaches that played against them this year, it's amazing how many of them um, bring Miller up as arguably their best player. Um, um, their most valuable player is probably Omir. I think they were 48-31 rebounding margin advantage the other night. So you're plus 17 on the boards, and this kid had 17 of them. Uh, he's probably the best rebounder that we've played against. You know, uh, in a basketball society where people worship how tall someone is, um, like that matters. Uh, this kid is 6'7", 248. And um, he reminds me of a player nobody's ever heard of unless you're my age, and that's Wes Unseld. He's the most Wes Unseld player I think I've seen. Um, he's got a nose for the ball. You know, good rebounders have one thing in common. They're always where the ball is. Bad rebounders never are. Now, some of those things are taught, some things are not. You can't teach someone to be where the ball is. This kid is. J1 Roberts is like that for us. He's a very... Uh, gifted rebounder. He just has a nose for the ball. This kid does it at 6'7", 250. Um, you know, um, their last game, they had a player that's probably going to finish first or second in player of the year voting. This kid dominated the inside. He just dominated. So, uh, Omer, Miller, Wong, uh, the kid that transferred from Kansas State is another gifted score. Probably their best three-point shooter. Um, more of a volume guy than Wong. Wong is, can shoot, can really shoot. But he just beats you off the dribble. And they run an offense that you can tell how good a coach Coach Laranega is in the way he lets them play in space. You know, he doesn't, he, you know, very similar to how we played with Tremont the other night. He puts his best players in a position to be successful, and he lets them play. You can tell they have great freedom. Their shot selection is is their, is the shots they like to get. Sometimes they're contested. Sometimes they're not. It doesn't matter. They can make them either way. And then uh, Omir, uh, I think you need a player that doesn't demand the ball all the time. He's going to give you great effort regardless whether you throw it to him or not. Um, uh, and you call those guys winners, and I think Omir is the ultimate winner. Uh, Poplar reminds me a little of Tajay Moore. He has that kind of athleticism. You know, he can make a, pl a play with his athleticism just by playing hard. Um, so Pac Wong, Poplar, Miller, Omir, um, you can see why they're the ACC champs. Um, 
They're good. They're probably the best offensive team that we've played this year at all five positions. Uh, Amir uh, can score, but he impacts the game more with his rebounding. But you, but you've got to watch him on that block too. So um, I like their team. You know, there's very few teams that we've played that I'd like to go see as a fan. This is one of them. We'll go to Chris Baldwin from Paper City Magazine. Chris, go ahead, please. Hey, Calvin, how, how have you seen uh, Jarris improve defensively uh, during the year? And what is it, his ability to get those blocks and sort of uh, erase some mistakes do for you guys? Well, most of the time he's erasing his mistakes. You know, um, wasn't somebody else's mistake. Jerry gets bees off the dribble, gets blown by, he just turns around and goes there and blocks the shot. So, um, I tell him I'd much rather him keep the bar in front of him and contest the shot and then let somebody else get the rebound or he go get the rebound, but you can't always count on blocking the shot of the man that just went by you. Um, um, but Jarrett's has really improved. When I say he was a bad defender when he got here, um, I've had some bad ones. Jarrett's is right there with all of them. Um, you know, didn't, he just didn't understand. But you know, when you... You're off, your game is built on offense. He's, it was no different than, um, um, well, there's, I mean, I, I got a long list of them. But once you learn to play in a system and where to go and when to be there, it starts with your attitude. The one thing Jairus has had since day one, and I could tell this in recruiting him, he's just a wonderful kid, just a sweetheart. Um, never had a minutes. Um, problem with him. I mean, I get on all these kids. Uh, Quentin Grimes is like that. The harder you get on them, uh, the better they are. And, and great players want to be coached, which is why he came here. He, he knew what he was getting into, but he wanted that. He, he knew he needed that. His father and mother uh, knew it. Uh, and that's a big part of why we got him. You can recruit a kid as hard as you want. They have to decide whether it's the right fit for them. Um, but uh, Jairus has just been a, a wonderful, wonderful teammate. Uh, Jamal, Marcus, J1, and Tremont, and Reggie. Uh, those five guys have been around here for a while. Uh, they, they, they deserve a lot of credit in his development, too. But um, Jairus asks great questions. He's, um, you know, he wants to do good. You know, he's, he's a pleaser but he's also learned to be um, independent. I don't want guys, I, I don't like pleasers to be pleasers. Um, you know, I, I'd rather them please themselves than please me, because I mean, they have their own standards. You know, don't, don't do it because I told you to, do it, understand why you're doing it. And that's where Jairus has made his greatest uh, improvement, um, Chris is, uh, he knows why, he knows why we're doing it this way. That's why they struggle in uh, De uh, November and December because they don't know what they're doing. You know, I always get amazed that people want to know what was wrong with our team in November. Nothing. That's why I never overreact anything in November and December. They're learning. They don't know what they're doing half the time. It takes usually to about Christmas to figure out our defense for those young, new guys. Uh, and every year we start over because every year we lose four starters. Um, but Jairus has come a long way, man. Uh, I'm really proud of him. Thank you, Chris. We'll go to Christy Reekin with the Associated Press. Christy, please go ahead. Coach, I wonder, what does it mean for you to have uh, Kellen and Lauren on your staff and with you as you go on this journey? They're probably why I'm here, uh, Christy. Um, th this has been just a tremendous blessing. Uh, there's not a day goes by that I don't think how lucky I am uh, to be working with my family. Uh, and that is such a blessing. I can't, you know, we use that word blessing a lot. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of evolved into the thank you and please category. It's just a word. But for me, it's a blessing in its, in its uh, pure sense, you know, um, you know, <clears throat> I, I was 
This is 2023. I was a head coach in college in 1983, uh, 82, whatever year that was, 81, 82. So, you know, when you've done this for 40 years, there's not a lot you haven't seen. Um, and the biggest thing I learned in the NBA is how to delegate. You know, I, I learned I don't have to do it all. You know, I was, I always thought I had to be the hardest worker. That that would show my staff uh, the way I wanted things done. And if they didn't do it right, then I'd go behind them and do it myself because I wanted things done a certain way. Um, but Kellen and Lauren, the, 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 they, they know your idiosyncrasies. Um, they come back at me. You know, they disagree with me. They tell me no. They say, that's not the right way. And, and they've, they just helped me. They've, they've made me better. You know, by telling, telling me, you know, I'll say something, uh, we'll have a staff meeting, and I'll say, okay, here's what we're going to do. And right before I'm finished, I, Lauren's got her head down doing this. <clears throat> I go, what's, what's wrong, Lauren? She said, we can't do it that way. This is this is what this school's doing and this is what this school's doing. And I said, well, explain it. And she said, go, I go okay, you're right. <laughs> you know, your guy has no idea what's going on half the time. But when you got your, when you got uh, a staff that's competent and that's striving to get better, and that's the atmosphere that I want. I, I want an atmosphere where everybody's always on edge to find out a part of our program that you can make better. And Kellen has really elevated this program in his way. Lauren has really elevated the program uh, in their way. And the, the thing that I had to teach them both was how to say no and understand that you're right and stand, stand up for that. You know, just because somebody disagrees with you, that's okay. That's okay. Um, you know, when you're coaching a team or running a program, you have to deal in facts. You can't deal in opinions. You know, you're not going to get anywhere with, with, uh, based on somebody's opinion. You know, you have to deal with your facts. And Kellen and Lauren has raised the um, standards of this program because they're so good in their area. And I tell all my staff, I want you to be first team off conference in your role. We're all role players. You know, I, I don't want to be the player of the year. I just want to be first team off conference because I'm part of a team. Um, and I got great teammates and that's what we are. You know, I may be the face, but we're all in this together. These guys don't work for me. They work with me and I'm honored to be working with them. Just as a quick follow up, obviously you've been coaching their entire lives. Um, when they were little, could you have ever imagined the scenario that you're in now where you're in the Sweet 16 and you have your family with you? Well, I had it when I was in the final four in the Elite Eight, too. Mm -hmm. So this is the uh, third year of this, or fourth year, um, fifth year. How many years? I can not remember how many years we've been to the tournament now. But um, it started five or six, uh, eight years ago. Eight years ago. But for Kellen and Lauren, the one that I thought would be the the uh, the one that would thrive in athletics was Lauren. When Lauren was 25 years old, she was the director of sports sports marketing and promotion at College of Charleston in South Carolina. Uh, so she she ran her own marketing program. That's why we cut off. That's why we do everything in house here, because she's the marketing director. You know, she does she does everything. Um, when we when we got here, they, they didn't have that. You know, all the coaches, the coaches, if they wanted something done, had to do do it themselves. Well, I was built for that. You know, when you're at Montana Tech and Washington State, although at Washington State, I had a uh, grad assistant that worked with me. His name was Chris Del Conte. Um, and he would come down to my office and bounce off uh, ideas. And then I had a guy that, a kid that lived four doors down that I'd pay five dollars to wash my car on weekends. His name was Jeremiah Donati. So I got the athletic director at TCU and the athletic director at Texas that was part of Kellen and Lawrence growing up. We were all together at Washington State University. Jeremiah's father was our team doctor. Uh, Chris was um, uh, Jim Livingood's uh, grad assistant. Um, but Lauren always had great ideas. Uh, my wife, Karen, uh, is probably the best marketing person I've been around. 
and we did it ourselves. But, but Lauren is so independent and so idea based. She's always after something new. Um, you know, I've had like, I just got off the phone with the Jerry West committee and Jerry West himself. I was talking to Jerry for 20 minutes. And, I, and I, when I got off that call, Lauren's waiting for me in the office to show me designs on what she think our new locker room should look like. Because she had one idea and now she's pivoted to another. So think about that. In the past, I had to do all that. I had to design the locker room. You know, uh, now I don't worry about it because if I, if Lauren's in charge of something, I'm good. It is going to be done and it's going to be done right. Uh, Kellen's in charge of something, uh, it's going to be done good. When the season's over and this re recruiting is kind of set for the following year, our roster's set, I, I, I go play golf. I used to never do that. I thought I had to be in the office 10, 12 hours a day, but now I don't have to worry about it because I got Kellen and Lauren, and then I got Hollis and Qantas and KC, and we're lucky that we've been together this long. You know, uh, Qantas and Kellen have both turned down uh, head coaching jobs uh, to stay here, so eventually we know they're going to leave because that's their goal. Um, but I'll replace them. I don't know if I can replace Lauren. <laughs> Thank you, Christy. We'll go to Adam Winkler uh, uh, from KTRK. Adam, go ahead, please, sir. Yeah. Kelvin, after the win Saturday, talking to the guys in the locker room, they were telling us that one of the driving forces for what changed in the second half was they didn't want this to be their last game with their brother. They wanted at least one more week with their teammates. As the guy who's kind of saddled with making this group love each other, how does that resonate with you? Um, well, I wouldn't expect anything different. I, I, you know, you interviewed them and you heard them say that. Well, I, I, I live it. I see it every day. Um, uh, I'll give you a good example. Some days, you know, there's, there's some things that are non-negotiable. I just non-negotiable. <laughs> and they're, they're the non-negotiables. Um, and if you don't do it, then you're going to be held accountable. Well, one kid just couldn't get it right. So he's running and running and running. About the fourth time he had to run, here comes Jamal Shedd to go run with him to make sure he makes his time. And then he looks at the clock and realizes he's about to not make his time. Jamal gets behind him and just shoves him along to increase his speed so he can get across the line before the horn blows. Because he knows if he doesn't touch every line, if he's not across the line when the horn blows, he's getting ready to do it again. Uh, that's a brother. That's this leadership. Uh, I've seen Galen Robinson do that multiple times. Um, I've seen, um, now we didn't have that when we got here. We had to build that. That's part of our culture. Um, but that second year, it started coming. Uh, the third year, uh, fourth year, it just has built and built and built. But um, the difference in this team is some of the earlier teams, you guys didn't cover us like this. So you didn't know this. We've been doing this for nine years. So this is nothing new here. We'll go back to uh, Chris Baldwin with Paper City, please. And then we have time for one or two more after Chris. Chris, go ahead, please. Calvin, you, you put put Marcus at about 60% uh, in, in, in that Auburn game. W what does it say about him that he's still able to, you know, spark you offensively and, and put up those numbers, you, you know, at, at that uh, percentage? And you know, how, how do you think he's doing now? Well, my, I think my personality is to undersell and over-deliver. <laughs> so that's, it. that's 60%. When I saw him do the step back, I said, hmm, that ain't 60. It's probably more like 75, 80. But I don't know what those numbers mean. I, I have no idea. I probably shouldn't have answered it like that. Uh, and I apologize for not, uh, not knowing, I guess. Um, but... You know, the only thing I said to Marcus, um, I didn't really get on the team that much. I said a couple of things maybe, but I, I got on Marcus more than anybody. I said, uh, um, um, Marcus, if you're going to play, play both ends. You got a guard, man. You, know, you, you give up, you score a basket, you give up a basket. You miss a basket, you still give up another basket. You, you got a guard. So that... Um, 
it don't have you don't it doesn't take much for Marcus. I don't get on Marcus much. Uh, his freshman and sophomore year, um, I did, but very rarely do I ever get on Marcus. He's kind of a does his own thing and he knows what to do. Um, but when I do get on him now, he pays attention. In that second half, he was a different Marcus. Um, his defense, the our, our programs, you know, we're 33 and three, not because we're an offensive juggernaut. We're 33 and three because we can defend and rebound. Um, a nice we made basket, we're pretty good. Um, but everything starts with defensive rebounding and that requires a certain attitude, certain mindset. And we didn't have that mindset the uh, first half. Um, so um, Marcus's defense was a testament to his toughness. You know, his, his, his groin is real. I mean, I, that thing's sore. He's down there getting treatment right now. Um, but hopefully this rest will help him. I, I hope so. I mean, groins are, you know, until they're 100%, they're always going to be there. And it takes a while for that thing to get completely healthy. But Marcus does the best he can. Um, and, some and sometimes they just need a little nudge. We'll go to Randy McElvoy with KPRC. Randy, go ahead, please. Hey, Kelvin. Uh, I apologize if you've been asked this. I hope not. I was able, I had to get on a little late. But uh, Tremont Mark, just uh, can you uh, describe kind of the growth of his game and what area of his game has stood out the most to you and his continued development this season? Uh, what, this one thing you got to. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, one thing that got overlooked the other night, Randy, was he had nine rebounds, which is tied a career high. Uh, you know, when Jermon got here, you know, he was more of a pickup player than he was a system player. Because in high school, you know, he just had the ball and he went and did his thing. Um, and um, here he had to learn to play, play basketball in a program, a winning program. But he came from a winning program. Uh, COVID shut him down his, I think it was his senior year, had a great chance to win the state championship. Um, you know, Dickinson had a really good basketball program, really good team. There was other good players on his team. But Tremont, Tremont is not a braggadocious, um, loud, self-promoter. He has no ego. He has, he, that, Mark, uh, Tremont has no idea how good he is. Um, but he knows he's good, you know, um, but everybody here kind of slides over and slides in, you know, this year, you know, we ran most of our stuff for uh, Marcus. Um, next year, you know, Tremont, the role will change just like Marcus's role changed when Quentin left. Um, Corey, Rob, Damien, whatever the chronology of that stuff is, but, um, Tremont's going to be really good now. You know, that stuff he did the other night is basically how Villanova plays. You know, Villanova spreads the floor and they put their best player with the ball and let him play one-on-one. -on -one. And then the defense has to determine who's going to come help. And then that guy's taught to pass it. Then they shot fake it. The next thing you know, they're in, at the rim. But um, uh, all of our guys have different skill sets. They're not all the same. Like Tremont's not very good coming off a pin down. Whereas Damian Dotson is the best I've had. Armani Brooks was, was a killer of any kind of ball screen. Uh, pinned down away from the basket when you screen down for him. Coming off a screen. Uh, that's not Tremont. Um, so you give him the ball. You know, you have to learn them. You have to see what their strengths and weaknesses are. Um, but when those two guys went down the other night, thankfully, fortunately, we had a kid that was a, could play out of pick and rolls, but also could play in space. But if you notice in the first half, we ran a couple of plays for Tremont and he scored. He got a layup off a little set we run. Then we dropped it down to him in the mid post. He turns and gets the basket. So I could tell Tremont was filling it. But I, we still stayed with the game plan. But all of a sudden, the game plan changed when those guys went down. And uh, Tremont had his confidence going from earlier in the game. Um, but you know, uh, Jermond is uh, the same every day. He's quiet, uh, doesn't say much. Um, he always pays attention, though. You know, when I'm talking, he always looks you in the eye. Um, 
He has a he has a good self esteem. Uh, he can, can get better. You know, the easiest guys to motivate are the guys with the highest self esteem. Um, there's a reason why our kids have a high self esteem, um, and that's you know we're we're very conscious of coaching them that way. But that all starts with our individual relationships with them. We every coach has an individual relationship with every single kid, and that's how we coach them. We know how to coach that kid. You can't coach them all the same. You know, there's some of them that you can um, get on a little bit harder, some not. Uh, Chaman is probably one that uh, responds more to uh, positive reinforcement. Um, when he screws up a lot, that's really hard to do <laughs> for me. <laughs> but um, I was just happy for Chaman. Couldn't have happened at a better time for a better guy. I mean, he's just a wonderful person. I I I love everything about Tremont Bar. He's somebody has an issue with Tremont Bar. I'm gonna question you because everybody loves Tremont. Thank you, Randy. Last question. We'll Thank go to Chancellor Johnson, please. Chancellor, go ahead with the last question for the day. Hey, Kelvin. In the spirit of the NCAA tournament, that is the winner go home. How does that challenge you as a coach as far as in-game decisions, substitutions? Um, just game management in general, from your perspective, does that heighten it or challenge you? No, at all? not at all. Doesn't even come into play. I live in a very simple world, Chancellor. Now, you just described a world that I can't relate to. No, nothing influences my decisions other than winning. Uh, you do the best you can, you know. Um, you just, I, I don't. Coach with regrets. You do the best you can. Um, we could play really good and lose uh, Friday because Miami's really good. Uh, Miami could play really good and lose, but one of us is going to go home. It's the way it is. It's my 19th NCAA tournament. You know, I've won a bunch of games. I've lost a bunch of games. Um, that's just the way it is. You know, you don't go home and punch holes in the wall because you lost. You do the best you can. Um, um, and that's one of the great things as you get older that you, you're at peace with. You know, this is a moment in time. It's all it is. It's a game, man. It's our 37th game. And uh, our guys know if you lose, you go home. But they also know if you win, you go on. So um, we look at every team as it is, and we prepare for them. Then you coach the game accordingly. Um, you know, 33 out of 36 times, we've left a winner this year. But I'm not going to coach game number 37 any different than I coach number seven. It just means more, but I don't coach any different. Coach, thank you very much for your time, sir. Okay. Have a good day, guys.